Okay, so let's say that we have a function of x and we need to compute uh, at what points does f of x become equal to zero? So, so compute x such that f of x equals zero. And so if you want to give an example, here is an example. If let's say f of x is a simple quadratic equation, then how do you solve it? Well, for a simple equation like that, you can guess that x equals, I think minus one would be one solution. Uh, and maybe two is a solution. So solutions are x equals minus one and two, right? Because that was very easy. Now, if it was more complicated, it had some say, exponentials or signs, then it's not really possible to guess a solution. So another way of solving the same problem is, so this is one, is simply guessing. Uh, try some numbers and see if you get the answer which you want. Second is to graph this. graph f of x versus x. So if you graph it, you will see that it, it, it intersects the x-axis at minus one and two. And this is the x, -x, uh, x line and this is f of x. And then you know that these are the two roots. Okay. A third way of solving this, and which is something which I would say extends to perhaps almost any function f, is to do uh, numerical root solving. Okay, and there are uh, many methods. If you, have, you probably have taken a numerical methods class uh, in your undergrad, which taught you I don't know, Newton Raphson's method, a secant method. Uh, bisection method, so on. So you can write a code which will do that, but I wouldn't recommend doing that because um, Python has uh, solvers which will do this for you. So the, the solver in Python which does is actually called fsolve, and it can actually find the roots of any equation you give. Yes, I'll show you how to compute the roots of this using code. And uh, then we take that, we see that we can use that same trick of finding the roots of this equation of one dimension to two dimensions and uh, extend it to inverse kinematics of a manipulator. So next I'm gonna show you some code, which will do, which will use F solve. Okay, so let me just run this first. Okay, so this is giving me the plot and you can see the roots are minus one and two. So how do I do this? Well, I write a function which returns x square minus x minus two. Uh, in order to find the roots, I need to call f solve. If f solve is defined in skippy.optimize. Now if you're using Windows, skippy is not installed and you need to do, I think pip install skippy in, CM, in, in the command prompt to install skippy. If you are in Linux or Mac, it should be fine. So once you have imported f solve, you can call it by giving the f of x. So the function f of x, it should return the value. It's a scalar value. And then uh, you need to give some guess. So I guessed zero. And when I said zero, it found a root which was closest to zero, which is minus one. So print root. Uh, if you can, you can try other values, like say four and on this, and then it will give you, uh, you can see the solution printed, it's two which is closer to four. And then, you know, it's so clear that you cannot find all the roots. If you want to find all the roots, you need to just keep trying different initial conditions. That's a pitfall of using a uh, solver. It'll only give you one root unless you, of course, run it several times. Uh, and then this is just code for you to get the graph of the function. Okay, so very simple. We'll just extend this idea to inverse kinematics and see it. So it basically boils down to root solving problem.
Okay, so let's get to inverse uh, kinematics of a manipulator. So I said, uh, inverse kinematics is a harder problem, and I'll probably convince you why it's hard in just by using equations. Uh, if you are not convinced with my explanation earlier, so for the manipulator, so it's, this is new section. Was kinematics of to uh, the manipulator. Okay, so uh, previously we developed an expression for x and y, and I'm just going to put it down here. x and equals L1 cosine theta 1 plus L2 cosine theta 1 plus theta 2, and y end is L1 sine theta 1 plus L2. Now, when we want to want the manipulator to be at a particular location, right? We specify x and y, and so let's say that uh, this is x ref, y ref, where uh, these things are given. So you're given them and you, you are told to compute theta one, theta two, that's two. So what you'll do is uh, you'll write this in terms of uh, f of x. So we can write a function f of x, which will be now be two equations. It will be L one cosine theta one plus L two cosine theta one plus theta two minus x ref equal to zero and then L1 sine theta one plus L2 sine theta one plus theta two minus y ref equals zero. So compute theta one and theta two, we should rather call this, better name for this would be F of theta one, theta two. such that f theta one, theta two equals zero. So we've moved from one equation, which was our x square minus x minus two to two equations now, and there are two unknowns. So two equations and two unknowns. And two unknowns. Okay, so you can see that you just cannot uh, eyeball and find compute that solution because you have cosine and sine, which are nonlinear functions of uh, of whatever variables they represent, right? Uh, if it was theta one without the cosine, then you could solve it with linear algebra, but something like this cannot be just solved with linear algebra. Right? And this is for the simplest manipulator, as you see, if you add more links and uh, links become three dimensional, you'll see that the equations become very complicated. Sometimes we're running into pages. So what we do here is we use the same uh, trick, which is use, write it as f of something equals zero and use uh, f solve to solve it. So what I did was I took this two equations, I specified I specified L1, L2, I took them to be one meter long, and then x ref, y ref was some, I gave it some random number, and then I used f solve to solve it. Here is uh, how you do it. This is sort of, I took the code from the forward kinematics to give me the end effector, and then I just put it inside the f uh, solve to get the to get the values for theta one and theta l one and l two. I'm trying to find where my have defined the parameters. There. So uh, l one, l two is one. X ref, y ref. X ref is uh, zero point five. Y ref is zero. So I wanted it along the x axis at point five. Uh, those are my parameters. I pass them to F solve, 
Uh, my function is called inverse kinematics. I need to give some guess. So I started with 0 0.01.5 for these two angles. I passed our parameters, which are these numbers. Now we need to go to inverse kinematics to see what it is doing. So this is the forward kinematic. This is just a copy paste of my earlier code. Uh, and I should believe I should call this somewhere inverse kinematics. So inverse kinematics now specifies, well, it gives for a given theta one, theta two, which is my initial guess or guess during the iterations. I took does the forward kinematics. Uh, the forward kinematic in turn returns the origin point P and point Q, which was the shoulder, elbow, and end effector. And then Q has you take the first to be X, the second one to be Y, and it returns the difference between X minus X. So that's basically the thing you're trying to zero. So it basically runs this nonlinear solver. I, I don't know what it is using and gives you the answer. Now the answer is uh, theta one is minus 1.318.63. I believe you should get the other solution if you try to uh, change this. We can try. Control P and then give the other solution. Okay. So in this case, I know that there are two solutions, but for a more complicated geometry, you couldn't quite know, you'd have to keep trying. If you give this beyond the workspace, and I know that the length of the arm is two meters, if I go anywhere beyond two meters, like 2.1, uh, it doesn't really go there. It actually gives me an error. It tried, but it couldn't go there. I know that this is out of the reachable space of the manipulator. The other problem which you'll see in these cases is um, if you try to start with zero, zero, and this is a common pitfall people do, which is they try to start at zero, zero, Oh, it works, that's nice. Uh, so the X is, the theta one is fine, but the theta two does, the zero actually means that the, the elbow is perfectly uh, in line with the, with the first link. And that's actually called what is known as singular configuration. And the singular configuration, what happens is somewhere in this programming, there is some matrix which becomes, uh, uh, the inverse of that matrix is not defined in things. And I'll talk about singularity with you later on, but it becomes singular, when it's singular, then the, uh, the, so the solvers depend on that inverse and that since that inverse is going to infinity, it doesn't really work, but it doesn't look like this is, looks like it is uh, robust to that. Uh, let's try this and see if it works. Yeah, it works. So this is pretty, pretty impressive that it worked even when there was singularity uh, in my initial solution, in initial uh, guess. Okay, any questions? Okay, so one last thing is uh, you can take this idea and do, you know, you can make it trace a curve. Uh, and that's what I did next, which is I got this to draw a circle. So now you did this inverse kinematics for one point, but now let's say that you have an entire trajectory, let's say a circle or a figure eight, or there are various curves. All you have to do is you need to solve the problem repeatedly for different points, and then you'll get whatever curve you want. So the, the extra thing I've done here is, uh, let me run this first, is to just give it a series of points, and those points span a circle, and it just goes about plotting, because at every point it solves this inverse kinematics problem. So the code which does that, so, so this basically defines the circle. And once I have that circle, I can then solve, use F solve in a, in a, in a for loop. So it solves for each and every point on that X ref, Y ref, and gives you the solution that I save in a variable theta one, theta two, and then I can actually plot this. Okay, so this is